So now I would like to introduce our second sponsor talk of the, of the day. Um, his name is Robert Bolick. Dr. Robert Bolick is a solution architect for the European and Middle Eastern area at Cornelis Networks uh, since 2002. He holds a PhD in astrophysics um, and has applied experience in developing massively parallel HPC codes, providing a real-world perspective on HPC deployment needs. Um, the title of his talk is Cornelis Omnipath Express, the open source software approach to high performance fabrics. When you want. Yeah, so, as Alberto said, my background is squarely in traditional HPC. So, I did uh, stellar hydrodynamic simulations also on supercomputers like Mare Nostrum, actually, scaling up to 100,000 of codes. So, I hope I understand what I'm talking about. So, the topic is about uh, open source fabrics. So, what does that mean? So, Cornelis Networks is basically the last remaining independent high performance fabric vendor for HPC, AI, and analytics. Everybody else has been bought up or is very exclusive to one specific architecture. And we have now the Omnipath fabric. Some of you might know it, probably from a different company. Previously, it was Intel. But the Omnipath fabric is our fabric that we also plan to improve going on, that is a scalable, high performance, energy efficient, cost effective, and especially what we put really big effort and, and uh, importance on is that it's open and interoperable. So what is our history? Our history begins basically 20 years ago. Cornelis Networks is formed from the um, best genetics of InfiniBand, as well as the Cray Arias technology that Intel acquired in 2012 and combined to create the Omnipath fabric. After 2019, Intel decided to leave the fabric business, but the original creators of Omnipath, going back 20 years, took the technology out and created the spin-off Cornelis Networks. And Cornelis Networks now drives the legacy of Omnipath forwards, developing new technologies, making it more open, interoperable, going to 1,600 gigabits in the future, 1,400 gigabits next year, and we also add network-based compute on an ISA that we'll probably be very happy to hear. And we'll also add CXL expansion capabilities in the future. So what is a fabric, actually? So if you're just a user, you might take it for granted. But all I can say is you can have the best CPU, you can have the best GPU. Without the fabric, all you will have is 10,000 very powerful laptops sitting in a rack in a warehouse somewhere. If you want to have a supercomputer, you need the fabric. The fabric puts the super in the supercomputer. And if you want to do supercomputing, you probably care about strong scaling. You have a problem, you scale it out to many, many nodes. The individual problem sizes become smaller. That means you need to communicate more often, small data sets. You need to synchronize them, collective algorithms, and so on. And for that, you need the lowest latency and the highest message rate. Because otherwise, when you scale up, you might actually actually slow down your performance. So if you don't have these qualities, you will not get it. You need lowest latency and highest message rate so that scale out means performance. And we do this using a best-in-class open fabrics focused um, host fabric adapter. So the adapter cuts that go in the, in the compute nodes. We have standard 48 ports, one new switches that enable us to go to the high bandwidth, low diameter topologies not only fat trees, which are probably the most industry standard right now, but also going to dragonflies and megaflies in the future that go up to extreme scale at very constant latencies. And for this, you also need very advanced adaptive routing algorithms because these dragonfly and megafly fabrics are very complicated in the topology. You might have um, congestion going on and you want to avoid this. And these are techniques that are going on in the hardware and the software of the switches themselves. And we do all of this by focusing exclusively on open source and open standards. So open source here means that we go with standard interfaces developed in the community. We go with standard Linux libraries. We have no proprietary line, uh, libraries in Linux. And we follow APIs that everybody can develop for and is accepted by the entire industry, not just a single vendor. So we have a very broad engagement of the ecosystem, both on the software side, mostly focused momentarily on the manufacturing sector, but we also work together with all the established storage vendors. So if you have 
the classics, IBM Spectrum Scale, GPFS, BGFS, DDN, and also Luster, but we're also having corporations going on with purely flash-based storage solutions like VAST and Weka for the more AI-focused needs. We support all major CPUs, and we will extend support for GPUs in the, at the end of the year. That means not only Intel CPUs and GPUs, but also AMD GPUs and NVIDIA and GPUs. And if a customer wants ARM, we can also supply this. And um, there's RISC-V missing on this chart, but we'll actually also implement RISC-V in the future. Because we focus on open standards, and we have a mantra that is upstream first, every Linux operating system will work with OmniPath right out of the box. And we also work with every communication MPI, so you're not limited by what framework you will use to develop your programs. And of course, can't go without mentioning AI, so we'll work with TensorFlow and PyTorch to get support and also for their special communication libraries that these people are developing. So what is exactly open source in our software model? So we are developing the open fabric, lib fabric provider with what we call OmniPath Express, <coughs> short for OPX. And OPX is a fully open source development, so you can download the, course, the code on GitHub. It's part of the official lib fabric repository, also on GitHub, and it's fully based on open fabrics interfaces. So it has no proprietary um, <coughs> components inside it. There are no dependencies. Okay. There are no dependencies. Everything is just um, working out of the box, basically. And that not, that not only goes for the software that you use in the MPI framework, but also in the kernel driver. So what we do is we have a fully open source and upstream first development model. What does it mean, upstream first? So upstream first, we publish our software directly to the Linux kernel, so directly to Linux Torvalds. He can merge it into the kernel so that everybody who develops from the official Linux software, so let's say Ubuntu, Red Hat, Slash, or Rocky Linux, they will all have the driver in box, so you do not need to install anything. We use the standard OFAT. We do not need to replace OFAT. There are no complications. There's zero installation. You just put the adapter in the node. It will be recognized, and we will start without you having to install anything extra. So this is our, how our software stack looks like. In blue, we have the traditional PSM2, which is the one that we um, inherited from Intel. There, we had some support for CPU, and, but also for GPU, NVIDIA mostly focused. With the OPX software stack in red, we will in massively increase our support for CPU-based RDMA frameworks like MPitch, but also going to more shared memory approaches like Schmem, Charm++ or Chapel that will use one-sided communication only and will extend support to all the major vendors of GPU-based software. So not only GPU direct from NVIDIA, but also the um, more open source standards developed for AMD and Intel GPUs that are based on the DMA buff framework. And the good thing about the DMA buff framework, again, is it's part of the standard Linux kernel. It is non-proprietary and open source, so everybody can develop for it. Of course, with all of this GPU inferencing, we have support for TensorFlow, PyTorch, and the necessary Nickel, Rickel, and 1CCL algorithms that do need some implementation in hardware to support the necessary uh, algorithms being used there. And also for storage applications, if you have um, an object storage-based system, these are also being built upon LibFabric. So they use the low latency MPI stack to transfer data, which is also used in the DAOs framework or, the com or other competing object storage formats from other storage vendors. Yeah. So what we get with this OPX standard? So the OPX provider is completely new. It's been developed for lowest latency. It is a very straight path to the hardware. And what does that mean is we have very low overhead. Very low overhead is important if you want to send many small messages, which is collective communication, if you do any MPI development and you have a defined type that does maybe random memory accesses, these are also random small communications done by the MPI library itself, which you do not see directly as a user. And there you get low latency for small message sizes with OmniPath Express. And that is up to 28% lower than NVIDIA HDR200. For large message sizes, of course, line rate becomes important again, but that is what we will solve next year going forward with the next product. In terms of message rate, because we have this special onload and offload architecture, so we not only do onload, but we also have, of course, SDMA engines 
that have no CPU involvement, but for small messages, you want to send many at once. For that, you need minimum, off minimum offload, minimum overhead using the CPU itself. So the CPU has the advantage if you add more cores, you can communicate more because you have more processing power available. If you update the CPU, you also lower your latency. So we can grow with your computer, with your cluster as you develop it further. What this means is that for software applications, even if we only have 100 gigabit, it's the latency mostly that counts. So we can, with our OmniPath 100 architecture, we can, for most applications, beat or at least equal HDR 200 for a fraction of the price. For most of the applications in use in HPC, it's really the lowest latency that counts, unless just the, ma the magic amount of um, data you can shuffle through the network, but which you will not really need in practice, especially if you do strong scaling to many thousands of nodes. The same is true for physics and life sciences, especially if you do quantum chromodynamics. These are very small messages. There you get up to 30% boost in performance using OmniPath compared to HDR200. But also if you do Gromax or electron structure calculations using CP2K, you will get better performance using OmniPath fabrics today. And that is not only on the Intel, but also on AMD hardware. So we are open to both architectures. We test and validate every hardware that we build on every available hardware. Um, CPU architecture. So here's our roadmap. At the moment, we have our 100 gigabit product OmniPath Express, previously OmniPath 100, that we will continue selling until about 2005. But next year, we will come out of our 400 generation hardware, so-called Cornelis Networks CN5000. The 5000 is because it's actually in our 20 year, in 20 year history. This is now the fifth generation product. OmniPath was the fourth generation product. And we'll see in 5K, we'll get 400 gigabit, we'll get advanced uh, routing algorithms for dynamic congestion management. We will get uh, advanced um, switch hardware that is open source. You can use standard Redfish APIs. We'll have an open BMC based management board. So you can use, if you build your own cluster, you can keep using your existing software. You can integrate it in any uh, management software that you have. We will have the APIs, standard Python APIs that you can use to get data from the switches into your management software without needing to develop anything specially. And once PCI Gen 6 is, we will make a next big step to 800 gigabit. And that's what's interesting to hear here is then we will then add also DPU capability. And the DPU capability will not be based on ARM technology. It will be based on RISC-V technology. So if there's RISC-V development going on, you can directly program also our adapters. You can run Linux on these adapters. They will have a standard, generally programmable RISC-V course on each adapter. There's also, of course, not only the DPUs, but also the basic adapter that might also have some RISC-V functionality. And what we also get is CXL, so you can make composable solutions where you are able to share the adapter between different nodes if you want, if you say you don't need the bandwidth, you just want to connect a lot of nodes, you can share the adapter. And as you can see, we are mostly limited by the generations of PCI Express bus because they define how much data we can shuffle to the adapter per second. So once PCI Gen 7 is coming out, we will have also the 1600 gigabit adapter coming. And um, the main focus that we have is that we always want to keep the, loss, the cost down. So that means that for CN 5K and CN 6K, we will reuse most of the technology. We will just go wider. So just imagine you put a second CPU in your switch and you double the bandwidth that way. So how does CN 5K look like? At the moment, we're already at one microsecond. I just did measurements last week where we got down to 0.82 microseconds for a full M MPI ping pong. That means the full overhead of the MPI library and the communication you do will finish in about 0.82 microseconds. For comparison, a memory access to DRAM is 200 nanoseconds. So it's you basically, as, as, as is the main goal, it's that shouldn't matter if you access memory local or remotely. What you also double, or actually quadruple, is the message rate per adapter. Message rate is an important metric for small bandwidth, small message bandwidth, because then it defines how many messages you send in a second 
times the message size gives you the effective bandwidth. The more message rate, the more small message bandwidth. And yeah, as I mentioned before, we get advanced congestion control, so every switch can talk to each other, they can communicate, tell us how my fabric is congested this much, please avoid me, and then the switches can do dynamic routing decisions on the fly for every individual packet. That's called fine-grained adaptive routing. For the CN6K product, we will have Stormal fabric, fabric Adapters. These are the same standard adapters you have today, except faster, but we will also have these DPU programming units that are basically combining the Fabric Adapter plus multiple RISC-V cores plus some specialized cores that are more programmable like a GPU. So for that, we will have a special programming model, but you can also just use a standard um, compiler development for the DPU RISC-V processors. You can even run Linux on them. You can submit MPI tasks to them. They're per perfectly programmable by the user itself. So what we get, we get that is with network-based computing. You can do compression, you can do encryption. If you have a fast Fourier transform on the network, you can do it on the DPU, keep the CPU free to do other stuff. All of that allows you to make the best use of the compute resources that you have. And if you go to very GPU-based architectures, you're losing some CPU power. And if you can add more DPU power, compute power into the mix, then you basically rebalance the flop per byte ratio. And the good thing is, OmniPath 100 existing now, on CN5K and CN6K are fully interoperable. So you can upgrade your technology from 100 to 400 to 800 without needing to rip out everything. You can do it very modular. You can have islands of different technology nested inside each other. So what is really the Cornell's OmniPath advantage? So there are six ones. We call it the six piece. We have performance, set lowest latency. There's power. OmniPath consumes less power than InfiniBand because of our special link layer technology that has less overhead for each byte you send. We are much more cost effective, roughly half the price of the competing InfiniBand solution. We keep innovating with our FLITS-based architecture. So FLITS is our technology that we got from Cray Arias. I couldn't go into it in the limited time I have. But that is more future-proof than InfiniBand, which is already 20 years old. And we're very partner-friendly. So we have no bundling, we have no bit conditions, you can combine any architecture with our fabric. It doesn't matter, we work with everybody. And probably a very interesting point for most HPC centers, we have very good product availability. If you want an OmniFab fabric now, you can have it delivered to your doorstep within four weeks. And if you feel, oh, I want to upgrade in the future, at the moment we can also offer you a special discount on CN5K that gives you the ability to upgrade your existing cluster to CN5K at a very low special price. So, thank you very much. Any questions? So we have time for, for a very quick question. Um, I know that you are all eager to go to lunch, but we have time just for one. So, is, is there a question somewhere? So anyway, you can find you can find Robert at the Cornelis Network um, sponsor table that is just outside the auditorium. Thank you, Robert, for your great contribution and also for the technical workshop yesterday. Yeah.